Hey everyone. So, I was thinking about this on the way home, you know, about how systems shape us and how we should p take that into consideration when we give power to a system. Um, and I'm talking about this in regards to the, the market. Now, the market is a good mechanism for a lot of things. I mean, I guess in utopian settings, you might wish to get rid of the market, say, if there was unlimited material wealth or if people were so kind that they would just give each other things if they really needed it and wouldn't ask for things if they didn't. In that case, you might possibly be able to get rid of markets. Um, but in today's world, they have an important role to play. The question is, what kind of market? Um, but there's also, of course, the other question of should the market mechanism be the only mechanism given that um, it really simplifies the world down to a very small set of variables does that encompass everything probably not for example in today's markets to avoid from trading goods with one another we invented money as a single exchange um, so we basically through market mechanisms can put a single value on everything in the universe now it's very unlikely that that single value such a simplistic formulation can really ever encapsulate accurately um, the value of something and for example I think a lot of people would agree we don't really necessarily want to uh, use the market as a mechanism for valuing human life in general um, for example I mean it may be that sometimes we have to if you get killed and someone has to pay compensation maybe it's inevitable that we sometimes do this but we wouldn't want to say that person's worth 500,000 bucks so if you pay 500,000 then you can kill them um, so there's definitely a limit to these money value things um, and I think the sacredness of human life is one of those things where a lot of people get iffy about just letting the market decide that's one thing but the other thing that I think is usually falls outside the conversation entirely because people don't want to acknowledge it is the fact that when we live inside a system when a system becomes as important as the market mechanism has for us then that system begins to shape us now if you ask an economist about um, morality ethics things like that um, you usually get answers along the lines of well it's not the markets responsibility people individually want to do this that's their right and they should be allowed to do so um, so for example we'll have things like charity where people can practice their ethics through market mechanisms because they use money for charity and money is a part of this market system and so um, despite the market being completely amoral we'll still have people be able to engage in the same kind of moral or ethical behavior as they would uh, prior to the dominance of markets as a form of social organization. The problem with it is that that really takes out of consideration how much the market has shaped us and our morality. Uh, because people, proponents of the market, uh, use it as this one-size-fits-all solution. And it takes this character of because everything we do everything we live we live inside this market system inside the system where there are these simple money values on everything and in this amoral system which has no real morality aside from if it's profitable then do it uh, that has in fact greatly shaped people and that has in fact become a pseudo morality which increasingly is displacing uh, other kind of ethical codes and obviously there was this vacuum which came from religion being somewhat undermined um, in modernity um, uh, because people started to question whether its basic premises are true thereby uh, putting at risk the entire ethical foundation of modern society but we have alternatives obviously and I think a lot of these alternatives uh, which 
often come to many of the same conclusions as a lot of the old religious beliefs make a lot of sense. But we also just unconsciously, tacitly accept this pseudo uh, ethics of the market and we let it dominate our thinking often to the point where we take actions as a global community or whatever that seem vastly unethical like letting millions of children die from easily preventable causes from lack of simple things like mosquito nets which cost next to nothing whilst indulging ourselves in various um, comforts, creature comforts. Um, and this is completely understandable on the level of the individual because I can't do anything about it, um, people tell themselves. And so, you know, and also they have this feeling that if they do something, no one else does anything, it's kind of unfair. But of course, as a society, the government could say we're going to go and we're going to help other people. But then we get this market ethics of no don't do it um, don't worry about it the market will settle it you don't have to worry about the ethical complexities of the situation you don't really have to think about all of the death involved the market mechanism will fix it eventually and it's not profitable to fix it so that must mean it's evil to fix it if we save these people it will probably have evil consequences it would distort the market somehow um, and nothing good would come of it. Uh, but that's really just, I mean, to me, that's a fairly vacuous kind of assessment. And the fact that the market isn't pricing a human being's life, uh, the saving of that life, which costs next to nothing, uh, as highly as a tiny technological convenience, shows to me how insufficient the market mechanism is in this setting for allowing us to decide the ethical action and even for allowing us to decide the efficient action when it comes to uh, things that even most economists would agree are good things like reducing total suffering or increasing total happiness. Um, but despite this empirical evidence uh, we've really fallen prey to this this mantra of the market and this total dogma and when you talk to people, it's it's this under underlying current which seems to often be reflexive more than more than something that they've adopted willingly. It just comes from everything we do being measured by the market or being measured up to the market or pu being put in market terms. It's this uh, subliminal almost this constant propagandizing of the system, which in its own domain of pricing goods and services, all other things being equal, is a fairly good system that makes sense. But when it comes outside its domain like that and goes into much broader ethical questions where it really shouldn't have any authority, um, then it becomes very suspicious to me, very suspect to me. And I don't think that we as a society have ever really uh, made a conscious decision to allow this to happen. It's just happened because of how important the market has become and how vocal its advocates have become and how well represented its advocates are in the elite because the elite is there because of this market mechanism. Um, so I think it's not just the question of do, do markets make sense, what kind of market should we have, and just taking that issue aside from how we live the rest of our lives and pretending like we can just leave everything up to the market, not discuss it any further, and then live the rest of our lives like, uh, like people before us did when they had their own ethical standards without those being affected by the market. Because these market concepts, what becomes in the end just pure market ideology affects every part of our lives and every part of our thinking. And I think we have to be very careful to evaluate whether that's really, whether these market ideas are playing the role that we want them to play in today's society or whether they have exceeded the bounds of what is reasonable and whether they've gone into areas 
where they are not only not optimal but almost non-functional. See you guys all later, Church of SDFU.